we know how much water are we losing? Very small cities, uh, there are in even 50% and 70 percent in some small Italian. 50%? Yes. Five it's really zero. a lot. Yes, it's a lot. So half of water arrived to the customer. Welcome to the Urbanista, where we discuss the water management challenges of Nordic cities. From safe drinking water distribution and stormwater collection to building sustainable urban living environments. Here is your host, Delphine Vassalo. Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Urbanista. This is the series where we discuss water management challenges in cities. I'm your host, Delphine Vassalo, and we are in Copenhagen, Denmark. We are at the World Water Congress that happens every two years. Now we are, we are in the Nordic area and the, there's been a lot of good discussion here these days about all the challenges that the water utilities at large as an industry they are facing. All the academia that is coming together to discuss, well, how do we move forward? How do we progress to keep to preserve the most precious asset that we have in this planet, the water. So that is the number one topic going around. And we will, in this series of Urbanista, we are touching many topics, many very interesting and complicated to say the least, given that there are many actors, many stakeholders in our industry from manufacturers, government entities, academia, NGOs, there are several of them around here in the, in the hall. So there's lots of interesting conversations going, going around. But today we are going to take a closer look at the water utility sector. And uh, for that, I have a very special guest today. So who are you and what do you do? <laughs> I'm Clara Ram. I uh, come from Poland. Uh, I cooperate with the associations, the Polish Association of Water Utilities and the European Association, it's Euro Federation, it's the Association of the Association of National Associations of, of Water and Wastewater Services. Okay, because then you have, if we start from, from the top to, uh, we, we can get down to the conversation with more more concrete things. So you cooperate directly with the European uh, Euro project or euro or yeah o, yeah well, like, o, like oh, yeah like french. water in french <laughs> yeah. so what what's what has been your participation or what has been your role in this project we are a really uh, exceptional organization because we um, uh, have we are a group of experts mm -hmm. in very different topics mm -hmm. in water wastewater but mm -hmm. experts working also in very specific topics mm -hmm. very very concrete details mm -hmm. that concern um, uh, water and inf influence uh, water utilities and way wastewater sector mm -hmm. so it's really a unique group of experts that try to explain how the sector works, mm -hmm. explain uh, how the law, the EU law, should work to support this. this. So the work that is coming, or the results, the conclusions that are coming out of this, all this uh, project, have, I suppose, have certain influence in the policy making at the European level, or how is that? Because I remember before in previous conversations said that there may be some some new things coming, some new regulations. There is a lot of new regulations mm -hmm. that we have to, to manage, we have to cope with. Mm -hmm. uh, the most important uh, last days is the new drinking water directive, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which implements a lot of challenges for drinking water sector. Mm -hmm. We have one uh, issue with the audio, the way I need just to change to oh, change yeah. the microphone. This is the type of things that happen, yeah, when you are live. But so to summarize a bit what Clara was saying, yes. There's, uh, there's several regulations uh, in preparation already coming, and for example, specifically on the leakage. So how, how, do our, how are they detected and the risk management? How the water utilities are, well, actually managing this, this risk and the... Uh, yeah, the risk management is something that we uh, have been working on for a long time, just mm -hmm. uh, preparing mm -hmm. 
to to because we we knew that it would happen mm-hmm. uh, that it will be obligation for mm-hmm. water utilities uh, with the leakage as well we were working on it but now mm-hmm. we have really cope with leakages into the network mm-hmm. so just to reduce the amount of water that we lose in the network so the challenge is just to make network more efficient mm-hmm. uh, but also find leakages so Do we know how much water are we losing in i mean i don't know europe or or at a, some number do we know so that a- according to benchmarkings mm-hmm. we calculated for example in poland it's about 2000 uh, cubic meters per kilometer of mm-hmm. network per year uh, but uh, it's also in percentage so uh, denmark is mm-hmm. really a leader they lose really they are ex- expert very low, on it very and low they percentage lo- yes very low percentage so the limit is i don't remember but it's about 10 percent uh of 10 percent loss of the t- okay of, but that of water lost in the network but it's still if you yeah it's still 10 percent i don't know if we take it to an absolute numbers there's a lot of cubic meters i mean and yeah, you, you mentioned okay cities. denmark is in a very good place they are like yeah the forefront uh and with the 10 percent there may be another countries that may not be doing that well but i can imagine that is 15 20 percent and um, more can alarming even things in very small cities uh, there are in even 50 percent on severity percent in some small italian yes five it's really zero a lot. yes it's a lot so half of water arrived to the customer yes and half is just lost somewhere so there are challenges that we we have to manage So and we have a good example for example from denmark mm-hmm. and from another for example big cities the, that mm-hmm. manage the issue but uh, the challenge is for smaller how they have to uh, calculate water mm-hmm. loss mm-hmm. but also how uh, they should invest so they should uh, renew their pipes uh, renovate mm-hmm. their mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. network mm-hmm. so a lot of uh, technologies uh, in uh, just network rehabilitation are, are mm-hmm. needed because there's the money is always the problem so there's never enough money of mm-hmm. course to cover all the to pay for all the things that we need to either renovate yeah. or build new but just try, i'm trying to figure out if we do some numbers like we are losing 50 half of the water So how much money is is well going to the trash versus okay if we do certain well a significant amount of investment hey well i guess that would be compensated but i guess that's a lot of numbers but the have you heard from the utilities or the municipalities they, have they been in this type of number crunching exercise so the first thing is just to calculate mm-hmm. just to know if you don't If you don't, if mm-hmm. you don't know, you can, uh, you cannot react. Yes. Yes, exactly. So, so you have just to to learn about your network. How much water do you lose, and w- where it's lost? Mm, and another thing are just to 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 fit the network. So to check, for example, water metering, mm-hmm. how you meter, and if water meters are really uh, fit mm-hmm. for purpose. And after you have care about your network, about the pipes, mm-hmm. so about the material you choose, uh, you you have to to check the age of pipes if they are old, and you have just to to <laughs> replace them. So there is a lot of small factors that make the the knowledge, and uh, after you can prepare a, a program. Mm-hmm. Do we know, or is there any data? anywhere i mean at the european level about the average age of of the networks there are some benchmarkings and for example for in poland we have pipes that uh, are more than 100 years old but sometimes they are not as problematic as for example pipes that were built in uh, 1980 Mm -hmm. because it was time uh, of, of Let's say communism, yes, mm-hmm. and also the the uh, they were not well done, so they mm-hmm. were problem not maybe the quality of material, but also how they were placed into the ground, and they it's okay. a problem. So they are more problematic. They are about 40 years old, but they are more problematic so than okay. older 
So it's not only the age of any given area or, or infrastructure piece, but yeah, material how, how and also uh, the just human work, the quality of, of, of workers, because they those, work on it. Those that are 100 year old, well, I can imagine that may most likely they are not made in plastic, they are made no. on, on no, concrete no, no, no. or I, I don't yes, know what, what, yes. what they were using 100 years ago. So they, 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 they are. They are some steels or some mm -hmm. materials uh, that that mm -hmm. the network was done from from them, but but they are not as problematic as as younger network. So the material is very important. How to choose the material for the network and and really how to how to pl place it. Or yeah, okay, the durability of the of the material that's a uh, very important thing. But you say you mentioned also that there may be certain works that are not that old, just made. 20 years ago or 30 years ago, and those are the ones that are creating, well, some problem. Uh, is this maybe the design, the planning of that at that point? So the the civil engineering firms or the designer or the planner that is working at the museum, so those people are in, are in charge of, uh, uh, in the long yes, run, yes, have responsibility, yes. I don't know, legal responsibility, but they have a responsibility to plan. There them. is really a group of experts responsible for where uh, for for the network that it's so so they have to design it well mm -hmm. and choose the material and after they have to 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 make it yes mm -hmm. so just to place it into the ground uh, and it costs that's right so we calculated for example in in uh, Poland they were a program uh, uh, we calculate the cost of implementing this new drinking water directive mm -hmm. and about 20 uh, billion uh, zlotys, so it's about 10 billion uh, euro. 10 billion euros, yes, okay. Yes, so it's really... Yeah, 10 uh, billion yes, with a B. 10 billion euro yes. that uh, has to uh, have to be, to be uh, put into network just to make it working properly. So we have to re renovate or just uh, rebuild the network. And the cost of it for next 10, 20 years, it's about 10 billion euro. But this is purely to do to build it or to do the actual renovation. Renovation, is the, yes. Is there, uh, well. yeah, to get the job done. One is done, okay, let's go to the next phase, etc. Is there any thought about the total cost of ownership? It's not just getting it done, but then how are we running it? In the long run, how much money it costs to for the utilities to run to run the business? So uh, those two two type of costs. So so cost of running. Uh, so we calculate of this in tariffs. Mm -hmm. In Poland, there is a central regulator, mm -hmm. and we just uh, report how much money we put just in the operate and the maintenance of the network, and mm -hmm. after how much money we need for in investment. So the, the really the common problem of almost all utilities in Europe is just to have enough money for investments. Yeah. And it is sometimes very difficult to explain to central regulators and to politicians that this money have to be found and we have to have enough funds to invest just for future generations and just to keep this, this network working properly. And uh, yes, it is a bit political issue, not only technical yeah, and yeah. also economic issue, a bit of everything. But yeah, okay, it's, there's, as, as we have been discussing here before, it's a very complicated setup. There's politics in once a while, government, governmental entities, and they have, of course, their own uh, goals. But well, the society is, well, needing all these, all these services that are up to the I mean, in a good service, in a good, yeah, providing a good service to the to the society. So the money invested there, as you said, is long term, because if we don't invest enough now, we we're talking before about risks, risk management. So if we don't invest enough now, in the next five, yes. ten years, so how, where are we going to be in fifty years or hundred years? That well, maybe none of us is going to be here in hundred years, but. Our children will be here. But pipes will stay. Yes. Oh, yeah, they, they, yeah, exactly. The pipes will stay there. So yes. if we don't invest now, we is that a type invest. of urgency? Or, I mean, that is... How do you see that? How do we make this, this, this possible? That So, so uh, there is a, a model of free teeth. It's OECD. Mm -hmm. 
that uh, invented the three T models. The three T models is tariffs, taxes, mm -hmm. and transfers. Mm -hmm. So we can to get money for these three sources. So we have tariffs, mm -hmm. and there is uh, issue of to explain people why they pay such amount of, of money for mm -hmm. in tariffs for water, for example, mm -hmm. and other media. And we can also have transfers and tariffs. For example, um, wastewater utilities, they pay environmental taxes. Mm -hmm. And these environmental taxes can just be, can, can fund also uh, investments in, in mm -hmm. the wa water wastewater sector. Or we have transfers. For example, in Poland, we receive a lot of grants and a lot of funds mm -hmm. from EU, European Union funds. Mm -hmm. And thanks to it, for, thanks to, for example, operational program infrastructure and environment, mm -hmm. we could invest a lot and we could really finance a lot of uh, also networks in Poland, mm -hmm. water and wastewater networks, mm -hmm. just to build them, just to, to, to catch up this, this mm -hmm. gap we, we had uh, when we accessed uh, the European mm -hmm. Union. These environmental taxes that you mentioned that are, well, on the water utilities, on which what is the base of how are they calculated which is the well they have the title environmental tax what is behind there or it depends on on uh, member states mm -hmm. every member state can have its own uh, system but all is built on the water framework directive mm -hmm. and the water framework directive and also uh, european treaties mm -hmm. uh, the law says that polluted pairs and user pays, mm -hmm. and also they uh, have a precautionary principle. So you cannot mm -hmm. make damage to the environment. Okay. And if you make damage to the environment, you have to compensate exactly, yes. it, you have to pay for it. So, and all is based on this. And also water services that have to be, to be financed, to be paid by users. Mm -hmm. So it is just the, the, the EU rule. And after, uh, sorry. And it, it costs recovery rules. Mm -hmm. And after every country, they can just feed their own system. So the most popular system is just to have this environmental tax into tariffs. You use in mm -hmm. environment because you drink water yes, exactly. and you use toilet. So you have to pay for it. So you have this in tariff, you have this mm -hmm. amount for mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. environmental tax mm -hmm. for it. So then what do you think like from our side, the manufacturers, what, how can we help the water utilities minimizing those leakages, helping them to manage well, the, the risk of well, further damage? So, okay, we, have, we can come up with many solutions, materials, measuring systems, real-time measuring of drinking water, I mean, m many things. But what do you think is the one or two things that really would the water utilities appreciate the most for, from the that, manufacturers at, at large. Yes. So I think that the, all these uh, rules that are in circular economy, mm -hmm. which is very wide system, but uh, we have to invest in uh, sustainable uh, materials mm -hmm. and uh, that they will stay. For example, when you, we invest in pipes, we have to be sure that they will stay for a long time, that they, they will work properly, mm -hmm. that they will uh, not have uh, holes, so not have mm -hmm. leakages. Mm -hmm. uh, but also I think that uh, a very important role is just reuse, how we can reuse materials. So for example, when we replace pipes, mm -hmm. how to reuse old pipes, how to make maybe for this used pipe the new one. Mm -hmm just to bring it back mm -hmm. to the factory and, mm -hmm. and produce the new pipe. So all, all that concerns use, I think that it's also uh, challenging for producers, but very important. And Be also the quality of work, it's very important. Yes, because this whole idea of the circular economy, of course, that's, that's the way to go. And from on one hand, when we have a new product, yeah, that, okay, that, if we can make it from a, resource, um, a renewable material, not 100% like virgin material that comes directly from, from oil, but integrating some, that is one, okay, one way of making it the product itself 
sustainable. You mentioned, yes, after the life, uh, the product life, well, ends. So how do we recycle that? But then when we, or actually we use recycled material that comes from, well, from somewhere else uh, into certain pipe, that pipe still needs to comply with certain quality standards and certain parameters, sure, of yes. course. No, we cannot just use them for, yeah. for, for anything. Sure, yeah. um, the use of recycled, we have been hearing that there's this perception that if it is, if it is recycled equals second class quality. No, 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 it doesn't comply then with the standard and, and kind of, have you heard anything about that? Or? You're right, but it's uh, the third challenge for producers, just education. So we have to, to make our society uh, really uh, aware about mm -hmm. all, uh, all systems, yes? What mm -hmm. is recycling, how it's based on, and how it's organized. So education is the very important challenge also for, for all of us. Well, that's actually, that's the purpose that what we want to, to, to run this yeah. series of, of, um, uh, of, of videos. So, yeah, to listen from the different people around in the, in the industry, how can we, well, communicate and, yeah, educate each other. Yeah, we also are, are learning from the manufacturing side and uh, what are the common beliefs that are may not be true and what is actually, yeah, the, yeah. the reality. Um, always the money topic you were talking about the environmental taxes all the expenses all the costs that the water utilities need to um, um, go and need to incur uh, what about the end consumer because if we increase the price of this and the the production and the operation and well at the end somebody has to pay for it and it's well i mean you me i mean the people i mean the actual inhabitants of um yeah of any given city are we paying too few for the water we consume? Are we paying enough for the water I we consume? Yes, I think that people are not aware. So so really people, I'm not sure if they are really look deeply into the water bills. Maybe when price rises, they are interested why it happens. Uh, but they should be aware what they are paying for. And in this new drinking water directive, I already mentioned it, mm -hmm. there is uh, also a requirement to inform society to inform mm -hmm. uh, customers and public mm -hmm. what is into this bill how it's calculated mm -hmm. and also how to make it smaller so how to behave how the customer should behave to use less water for example to to check its uh, internal installation for example internal water mm -hmm. network mm -hmm. if it's there are no leakages and to Inside of their houses Insta or their, bu yes, their buildings. Yes, yes, inside the buildings, some houses. Um, how to use water to, to, I don't know, for example, to, to take shower instead of take the, a bath. Yes, a, a bath. So, so really, sometimes a very obvious thing that we all can do. Well, yeah, that's, that's what I have been realizing. We take the water for granted because we're at home, we just open the tap, there you go, that's it. But no, I don't know, the average person or citizen may not be fully aware of the yeah. enormous effort that it takes to get the water just there, ready when you open, when you open the tap or wash your hands or whatever. And uh, yeah, leaving it there, running. I guess we come back to the topic of education. Education, <laughs> education yes. Education. education about value. In Euro Federation, we elaborated um, a note just to explain the value of water services. What mm -hmm. is the value? That it's not only price, but it's well-being, it's health, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's safety. Mm -hmm. So all these that you get from water services that you, that you receive, mm -hmm. and it all makes it that it's very valuable uh, services, not just only uh, pay for, for water that, that runs from, from tap but this water is, is safe. You can drink it and you will not be, be sick, yes? Yeah? So, yeah. so it's, it's the value. You work on, in city, for example, Copenhagen is a perfect example mm -hmm. of the sustainable city. There is a lot of water everywhere mm -hmm. and you feel comfortable. It's mm -hmm. well-being, mm -hmm. which is difficult to, to just calculate how much it, it's, it's worth. Yeah, yeah, your, your water. It's something uh. that it's, it's, 
it's also value of water services. And what about Poland? What what's in your view? What who is doing it well? Who is in, in which city or I don't know? What is the situation in Poland in terms of a good operation of of, of the water network and well maybe the the the, the people the citizens of that any given city. Who, So Who should we look for example for a, for a yeah for to have an example Europe in and trend I maybe for it's all in the world the same that bigger city can do more mm -hmm. so bigger city are leaders let's say mm -hmm. and in Poland as well we we, we have uh, the capital is Warsaw mm -hmm. but also Krakow Wrocław uh, Gdańsk there are cities they uh, really work to to make the services better and better mm -hmm. Uh, there is also a lot of smaller cities, they, they manage very well. Uh, but also there is really a lot, I don't know, thousands of very, very small uh, municipalities mm -hmm. that really have to cope with day-to-day uh, -day, uh, work and they have no money and uh, resources, resources and yes. competences just to, to, to make a perfect system. So, and they need help. And we are really trying as the Polish Association and, mm -hmm. and also within Euro, we are also discuss how to help them. Very small water utilities. When you ask about uh, sustainable cities, I think that a good example can be Gdańsk. Gdańsk, yeah, it's, okay. it's, it's really a sustainable city. So I invited my colleague from, from Euro just to, to visit mm -hmm. Gdańsk. Uh, but there is a lot of also smaller cities that they, they manage. Uh, we, uh, uh, with cooperation with the um, University of Economy of, of uh, Krakow mm -hmm. and also Arkadis uh, company, we also uh, prepared a water city index. Water city index wow. is an uh, index uh, that shows all Polish cities how they manage with water. And there is every year we publish this water city index. There is a winner, and we just so show. So it's open, yes, transparent. Yes, yes. Well, yes, open, transparent, and you would like also to invite European countries, uh, European uh, cities, European cities also to participate. But this is a specific thing that you are doing only in Poland. This yes, it's our Polish product that we started to do uh, three, four years ago. We still make it better thanks to um, people from uh, University of, mm -hmm. of Krakow. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, next year we would like to invite European cities also to participate in this Water City Index yes, uh, I guess exercise. Yes, I, 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 I actually I was about to, to, to ask you, like, okay, to, to, as a conclusion, so what do we do? From where do we go now? But I guess that is, that is a very good example so you are already doing it transparent yes, yes, collecting yes. all the, the all the all the data that is in the index well, yeah it's just more european cities to want to adhere to this to this scheme yes the the, the uh, team building and exchange of information and cooperation is something that that it's really challenging but it makes life better and we also for example when i can also just a bit change the, mm -hmm. um, the issue about challenges that I thought about Ukraine, mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. war in Ukraine, yes, yes. and the infrastructure is dam damaged now. But we already yes. work how to help them in the future. We already organize ourselves. We have a lot of volunteers that can, they are waiting mm -hmm. to go there and to share knowledge, share experience, mm -hmm. Uh, just share uh, all uh, yeah their expertise ex and try to help. Okay, yes. we need to rebuild. Well, literally rebuild all the all the infrastructure. So we we need to exchange. We need to cooperate. Cooperation, communication. I mean, yes. in both ways or in, in all, all ways, and education. Education in all. So that's um, that's what I'm I'm, I'm taking now as uh, the three. At every age. <laughs> at, yeah, at every age. And as we were saying at the beginning, this is a very complex industry, very complex environment. And well, it's not just up to one part, not just municipalities, not just manufacturers, not just water utilities. So we all need to, well, talk and come together. 
easier said than done, yes. But I guess we have a very good example from, from, from Poland. And, uh, well, hopefully, well, there's something to follow, to follow. So, Clara, thank you very thank much you. for sharing all those, you know, all those insights today. Thank you for today. And, uh, Thank you for listening to the Urbanista podcast, a production of Upono Infra, the leader in sustainable infrastructure solutions. If you found it interesting, why don't you share it with your colleagues? We all together can move our industry forward.